Hello and welcome to this first of the video lectures on microbial metabolism. This uh, video will serve as a 30,000 foot view of the process uh, and processes of metabolism as we begin our work in micro and you begin working in the lab actually exploring microbial metabolism in some detail. So if we think about metabolism, what it is, it's really pretty much this all some of all chemical reactions that happen in a cell. Now that's pretty broad, so if we break that down a little bit further, we know that uh, metabolism is really the sum of two different types of reactions, uh, catabolism and anabolism. You may, may be more familiar with the adjective form of these terms, namely catabolic and anabolic, that are used to describe different reactions. So what is catabolism? Catabolism basically are decomposition reactions, where larger molecules are broken down into their smaller subunits, uh, but usually for the purpose of producing energy. Uh, on the other hand, anabolism, or anabolic reactions, tend to be synthesis-type reactions, where smaller molecules are put together and made into larger macromolecules. Those tend to require energy, no surprise. Uh, the diagram shown here on the slide uh, sort of shows the relationship between the two. Imagine starting on the bottom here where you have complex molecules such, such as starch, proteins, and lipids, the things that we all take in and all living organisms take in for food and energy. Those larger molecules during the process of catabolism get broken down, as you see on the pink, arrow, uh, pink box here, catabolic reactions. Uh, to produce simpler molecules, such as uh, glucose, amino acids, glycerol, fatty acids. Those reactions tend to release energy. That energy is captured in the cell, as you can see here in the middle, it's showing you a coupled reaction where ADP and inorganic phosphate are combined to form ATP, the major energy carrying molecule in the cell. So the whole point of catabolic reactions is really to transfer that energy from larger complex molecules to the simpler uh, uh, molecule ATP that can be used in the cell for all sorts of reactions. You see if you look at it starting on the top, if you start with simple molecules that have been uh, produced as a result of catabolic reactions, cells will combine those smaller molecules to make larger complex molecules through the anabolic reactions. Moving down here through the green box, and then again ending up down on the blue box with the complex molecules. Not surprisingly, that those series of reactions require energy, hence why you see the ATP coming in on the right side here and breaking down to produce uh, ADP and inorganic phosphate during those anabolic reactions. So that's the big picture view. If we zoom in a little bit, uh, we can see the metabolic pathways that we're going to be interested in in the lab. You see this four, we have it sort of broken up into four basic categories here. The protein metabolism, nucleic acid metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, and lipid metabolism. These reactions as shown here all suggest that these are being broken down. So these would be uh, catabolic reactions. Um, each of the steps is labeled with a letter here because what we want you to do is we go into the lab uh, it's very easy to lose sight of, of where the particular test you're carrying out in the lab fits in the big picture. So if we're uh, looking at, for example, a process most of you are very familiar with, namely uh, taking sugar or starch in and breaking it down uh, to produce energy in the cell through a fermentation process, that would be starting somewhere up here in the middle with a polysaccharide. You go through this sort of series of steps H into simple sugars, maybe into glucose, which would be broken down to pyruvic acid, which may end up through the fermentation process producing lactic acid, for example. So the steps H, I, J, and P, which is, uh, would be involved in that metabolic pathway. What we want you to be doing for each of the lab tests that we'll be carrying out, uh, when you know that you're going to be doing a particular test on a particular day, you want to read the little description in the lab manual that describes the actual test and try to figure out where on this big picture that metabolic test is really focusing in on. Each day before you come into the lab, if you have to do a particular metabolic test, there's a simple one question quiz uh, that's on the portal that will ask you to identify the step or steps that are involved in that particular metabolic test. The point of that is to make sure that you're keeping uh, a sense of where in the big picture each of these individual tests fit. It will help you as you're looking at uh, 11 or 12 different individual metabolic tests to 
have a, a big picture view throughout. So that's the quickie introduction or the 30,000 foot view to metabolism. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to bring them up in class. Thanks.